Hello and welcome to Weizmann channel. In the last video about the plot window, I felt like I didn't quite explain what all the values mean when you look at it. So let's change this in this video. Meanwhile, I'm doing some things. I'd like you to smash the subscribe button and destroy that like button. We're inside the plot window, we're inside the proxmark client. And when we first take this one up, you see one line. However, when we do a data load, load a trace, you will see that we get two lines. So let's start with the first row. It's the green one. Max 117 means the highest value, the maximum value, as seen in the current viewport. We're only looking at a subsection of the signal right now. So we call that the viewport. And we call it otherwise the whole tracing. So max is the highest value what we're looking at, and min, which is the next one, is the second one, the lowest value up here. The mean is average of all the samples in the current viewport. The n is number of data or samples visible in the current viewport. So it's 1148 samples we're looking at right now out of 42,000. Cursor A value is this value underneath where I have the yellow marker. So if I zoom in, whoops, I go up here and I zoom in, the value where I'm looking right now is zero, which makes sense because that's the one. If I take cursor B value, that is the purple marker. When I right click and move it, I can see that is now negative eight. So that's what this does. That is line one this first row of the information we're talking about. The second info row is a little bit different. The at sign indicates where in the signal trace we're looking at the curve. So we're starting at uh, index 430 and we end at 525. And the total number in the end in the row below uh, above is 95. Makes sense. The distance is the distance between the DT is distance is the distance between yellow and the purple marker. So right now it's nine samples between. Then we have zoom. It's about how much we zoom in. That's a little bit relative to what we think is 0.1, but that's what it is as a factor. Cursor A position is where in this index we're looking at, which index value we are. So right now we're at index 443. The cursor B position is likewise for a purple marker. Grid X and grid Y is lines. We need to do this. Uh, in data grid and help text for it, you will see that you can add X values and Y values. Let me do X values first, because then you see this gray subset of lines behind it, right? So if I zoom out, you see it goes all over it. And this is good for seeing how wide it is because it gives a line, a gray line, along uh, every 64 samples. If I add a Y value, 20, I also get vertical lines. Now I can easily see how, uh, how large a section of a, a signal is between here is about 20 to negative 20. So it's about 40 in amplitudes from the top to low here between. So it's easy to see, by the way. I will remove the Y axis right now and go to just this one to the X uh, grids instead. Because the next one is locked and unlocked. If I scroll now with, more, uh, with the mouse wheel, you see that the tracer, uh, the green line, is moving. If I press L while it's in the plot window, you will see that both the Right, the gray lines, the column lines, and the trace moves along, so we locked it together. So why is that good? Well, if we zoom in or out, we want to have a good way of mapping it. So since this is FSK, it should be quick, shouldn't it? Let's zoom in. Let's zoom in a little bit. So yeah, it matches up quite well. Not typical. Uh, if I unlock it and I move a little bit, you see I can move it by a byte. I can align it up to this because this looks like a 
shift in the frequency because it's a shift it's a frequency shifting signal. I press L, it locks, and now you can see symbols. How many symbols there are sent based on the clock? Right? Does that make sense to you? So if I scroll now, it jumps out along with it. If I press unlock, just the signal moves. So that is what you use that. Grid X offset is supposed to be, uh, right now is out of bounds, supposed to be some related figure, offset figure for the DM mod plot line. But it doesn't make sense too much. Now, if I do data raw dash dash fs to decode this, and so, oops, I zoom out a bit. Well, that didn't do well because I had this part and it had this part. Trim that, and I will rerun this one here, and we get a little bit better data. The grid lines are aligned up. I zoom in, and you see how it matches perfectly with the clock and the decoded signal as in uh, what this represents. And you can scroll around, and it makes sense. Normally, that grid X offset should have been in the beginning here indicate from here where it starts until there so if i oops, if i scroll in here this value 30 in the grid x offset should match where my yellow line is right now and its position is 30 so that's interesting so yeah that's what it is now that explains the two lines of data the next thing I want to say, talk about, and I mentioned before, is the quirks of these values here. It's, it goes to 30 and negative 30. So the plot window automatically scales according to the values that's in the viewport. So when I zoom, I have to reload this now because I cut it away. I reload this signal a little bit easy like that. You will see now if we move sidelong, it jumps. If we go from the 70 it is negative 70 and now it's 140 to negative 140 it is a little bit scary when it jumps around like that because all of a sudden it's focus up and down but it's related to the max minimum values and a little bit you know confusing when you do it but that's one of the quirks of it and yeah now the x value and the x axle down here is the signal data in discrete time domain and this is a sample at one kilohertz frequency so each uh, sample dot square when you look into it is on the field clock of eight microseconds the y axel up here is the amplitude scale you can see to the far left which matches into this auto scaling max minimum all right does that make sense how it jumps up and down now so yeah and that should conclude this today i hope you enjoyed it and let me know in the comments below if there's something else you want to know about